Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. Today I'm going to take you through a 2G open root test here. We're going to be doing a TIG hot pass, or excuse me, TIG root and TIG hot pass. Then I'm going to jump over to a 7018 all the way out to the cap. We're going to be doing a carbon steel 6 inch schedule 80 coupon. I'm going to take you through the steps right now. Let's get to it. Alright guys, the first step is we got to take all this um, slack off the anti-rust corrosion paint here. So we got that off now. So the second step is we're going to take this coating off on this side. And since this got a little land, I'm going to take that away because I want it to a knife edge. So I'm going to use this uh, four and a half inch grinder with a furg wheel on it. So all I'm going to do is go like this. Let's get to it now. I'm going to inspect this, make sure it's the way I like it. So it looks pretty good. So we got this off. This is all nice and clean. No more protective coating on this. On the outside right here, I want to get this away. So I'm going to just take the same wheel and just get this cleaned off. All right, guys, the first uh, coupon is already cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and start the second one. Then I'm going to show you guys how to pack this up properly. All I did is uh, bend an eighth inch piece of wire here. This is going to be my B spacer. Then I'm going to take my clean edge, put them together. I'm kind of going to fill the insides and make sure they're matching up. If you guys got a straight edge or a piece of metal, like if you guys don't have this, you guys can use a straight edge, the people starting out in school. And I just go around here and make sure they're all pretty much touching. If you're off, kind of split the difference on each side. So that's about it. Then I'm going to take this weight because when you're pushing, when you're tacking, the pipe wants to move. So I'm going to take this on here, go like that. It's going to keep me everything perfect lined. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my gear and go ahead and tack this. All right, guys, we got four tacks in. So how I tacked was I take the torch, uh, bring it up to it, make sure my tungsten's not sticking out longer where it's going to touch the puddle and mill the joint. So I make sure my tungsten's in a little bit. So I start my arc right on the bottom bevel, getting, get it hot, get it melted at 90 amps, then bring up where the knife edge of the bevel is melting at the same time. Then I hurry up and add my filler wire. I hang it about 20 degrees, my filler wire, just like this. Then I just go ahead and do a little small wiggle back and forth. I go to about half inch. And right when I get to the end, I pull out the filler wire and bring my, uh, bring my puddle down on the bevel and yank out. Because if you stop in the middle of it, you're going to have a pinhole. So you want to definitely bring it down to the bevel on the thick part. Then hurry up and snap away from it. All right, guys, we got our four tacks in. So right here, we flipped over. And we're looking at the inside of the tack. So we broke down both walls. Uh, so that's really good. We're slightly flush to a 16th. So uh, we're going to go ahead and inspect the other ones. We broke down both walls here, broke down both walls. It's not below the surface. It's not concave or anything. In the last tack, we're good. So we call the inspector over here. He looks at it. What are you looking at? All right, inspector passed. We're going to go ahead and lay the root in. We're going to put it up in the 2G position. We got the pipe up here in the test fixture. So before I usually um, go ahead and start welding, I usually take a wire brush and a file. I want to get all the oxidation off from the, uh, from the welding with the wire brush. Then you see some glass, it's silica. So I want to take that and, and get all that off with the file and wire brush. So I just clean every tack really good. Do a good cleaning because that's going to help you weld better. So we're, we're just going to go ahead and start welding right now. We're running off of Everlast 275 Lightning. I got about 97 amps or so. The reason I got a little higher than normally I like because I got a tight area right here. Because when, when I'm setting this pipe up here, I want to look for the tightest area because I don't want it to close off later on. So I'm going to start right here and just go ahead and weld that all with the next tack. All right, guys, I'm going to start a quarter inch back on the tack. I'm going to kind of go slow, let that, let, let that tack warm up a little bit. I'm going to come up to the edge, watch it uh, melt, hesitate a little bit, then I'm going to add my filler wire. All right, then I'm going to lie my filler wire of about 20 degrees. Don't put a lot of pressure on it. And just keep walking it back and forth. Nice and tight wiggle. All right. Just keep moving. If you do big wiggles, you'll get less penetration. If you worry about penetration, blunt your tungsten a little bit and put a little pressure on your uh, filler wire. You want to go nice and fast wiggles. You see previously I had a uh, the puddle kind of got big and I lost it. So I added a lot of filler wire in there, had to kind of do it a little freestyle instead of doing lay wire technique until I got it back under control. I was going too slow. So that happens. That tells you you need to speed up a little bit. So you do small wiggles and just keep, just wiggle way faster. 
all right if you have too much if you don't have enough angle on your filler wire it will slip on you and then it'll jam jam a whole bunch of rod inside the puddle then you'll have cold cold wire feet on the back side it's called all right we're coming into attack all right i'm gonna stay on top of it hesitate for a, about a couple seconds and we'll run about another eighth inch a quarter inch past it and go on my bevel and strike away from it real quick that's it so we got the root in here we're gonna put a hot pass on next the hot pass will push the root out a little bit more on the back side um, we don't usually call the inspector over yet because we got to put the hot pass in then we call the inspector over all right so we're gonna go ahead and get started on this all right guys running 110 amps it might be a little cold but that's the way I like it I'll um, just sit here and basically idle for a second let my puddle get a little bit big how I want it I'll just move a little bit back and forth to help it get bigger as soon as I like it I uh, put my filler wire on the on the top edge of the puddle right at the bevel on the top of the pipe then I basically just move up and down pause on the top and pause on the bottom a little bit I want to make sure it's going to fuse in good then I'm just going to sit here and just wiggle back and forth all right your, your hot pass should be no bigger than about three eighths all right the reason we got it on the top the filler wire because gravity pulls stuff down and the uh, bottom will take care of itself I hate grinding that was the hardest part this is the easiest part right here is just filling this up welding once you get the root in you're pretty pretty golden all the way through then until the cap you're, that's where the other nervous part is yeah I'm just coming down here pausing letting it the puddle float out to the side of the bevel just moving up and down that's it keep light pressure on everything if your hand is starting to hurt and stuff that means that's telling you something you got too much pressure on the filler wire or torch the TIG whip you want to keep it up or on something wrap it around the pipe or stand because uh, if you just leave it free handing or just hanging down your hold your arms holding it up the wrist is holding it up and you're gonna get tired and fatigued a lot faster the reason I'm doing a walking cup it's easier you're staying steady and you're keeping your stick out nice and consistent all right if I want to readjust I usually come down the bevel I leave see how I can hold my my hand away my filler wire staying up I can either move my body around and get more comfortable then I come back and reposition myself that's a little trick you just stay still a little bit but stay still on the bevel all right and just keep moving back and forth we're running ER 70 s dash 6 8th inch wire 3.2 millimeter some people crank their amps up to 150 160 and run through it fast that takes a little bit more experience over time right now I'm just showing you guys the good starting basics to do it and I usually just keep some filler rods in my back pocket so I just grab them out when I when I need them and just keep on welding without breaking the arc away all right so I'm going to reposition myself get a little bit comfortable I'm reaching around this pipe stand when I was in school all day I didn't talk to nobody just well well weld until the teacher came to my booth and just asked them a lot of questions and just keep on welding and welding because once you're out of school if you don't have a welder or nothing you can't practice really so I'm going to kind of reposition myself throw my filler wire down and grab it a little one in my back pocket so I'm going to if I'm going around something I'm going to turn my torch and kind of walk it differently so I'm going to go like this and I got my torch parallel with the root I mean with the bevel here all right so I'm just going like this that's all I'm doing I'm gonna reach around this pipe like this and go ahead and weld it just keep going always keep your filler wire to the top of the uh, bevel top of the uh, top of the pipe up uh, inside the bevel I think I said that right <laughs> all right so I'll bring this puddle down on the bottom reposition myself a little bit more and just continue back up let's pull that puddle back down to the bottom so I can reposition my body better I think this TIG wire is on my f crap I mean this cable so I'm running out of room so I'm gonna see if I could reach with this left hand and grab the TIG torch and keep on going just like that 
All right. Then just grab this wire and just keep welding. You gotta go around a pipe just like that. That's what you usually do. That, you just weld that filler wire up there and uh, it ain't gonna move. Just make sure you're pausing on them sides. You go fast to the middle, pause on the sides. Your weld's gonna be a little concave in the middle, flat to concave. That's normal. All right. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop and look at it. All right, guys, there's the hot pass. I wanted to show you guys, um, you know, I mean, doing speed, just staying your, keeping your torch lit and everything. So let's go check this route out. Remember, guys, it's not my best, so don't be so hard on me. You see the whole view, 360 degrees. We're not hiding nothing for man cub. So uh, the route's nice and consistent. Everything looks good, good tie-ins. I would call the inspector over here. If there was a problem, I had a little low spot, take your torch, turn your amps up a little bit and run over that little low, low spot. And most of the time you can get it out and you're good to go. Our next step is we're gonna switch over to 7018 and we're gonna switch over the machine to DCEP. So let's get to it guys. I got a half a second of hot start on the time. Hot, st hot start 25%, arc force 10% and uh, the amps 85. We're running 330 seconds ESOL prime rod. All right, let's go ahead and weld this out. So I'm gonna aim this at the bottom toe of that um, weld we laid. And we're just gonna keep going around like this. I'm just gonna move my foot, slide my foot. I'm gonna get a little wobbly, probably. We're running about 85 amps. Always dragging that puddle. So we're gonna come to start when you pull out fast. So I turned my amps down a little bit. It was running too hot too fast for me. So we're aiming for that bottom toe of that hot pass. We don't want to go down too low. We're always going to keep ahead of our puddle. At least by a third. We're going to keep moving around. Use your knees to um, bend forward with it. Like that. As soon as I can't go anymore, I stop. So the reason you saw me grind this out on my stop, there's a chance that you can get lack of fusion. So I always want to eliminate that chance, especially on x-rays. So I basically just took a third eighth inch grinding wheel for steel and grind that out. It just needs a little bit, just feather that out a little bit. Then I just took the wire wheel and just cleaned it and that's it. I'm pausing a little bit on top of that top top of the bevel because I want to make sure I'm fusing in good. If we don't melt into the top bevel good, we're going to get like a little valley, sharp valley. Then you got to take your grinder out and use your grinder to uh, remove the trap slag. Because you'll see it building up and you can't get it out when you're picking it out with a piece of tungsten. If you don't get it all out, it's going to bust open on you. So I'm about out of rod, so we're going to stop. We're gonna switch over to eighth inch 7018 so we can fill this pipe up a little bit faster, all right? We're gonna make sure our, our weld is uh, going to go about a 16th below the um, top of the plate or top of the pipe. We don't wanna erase that line because that's our straight line or we can't see. We're just gonna keep nice and consistent, try not to move. I'm using my knees to bend all the way, keep about a five degree drag. I'm watching my bottom puddle. I'm just watching my bottom toe only on my weld. 
make sure I'm not erasing my uh, erasing my line. All right, so I'm gonna stop. So I put my hand on here to help make sure I don't pull out the uh, to have a better arc start because I was kind of wobbly. This will help stabilize you. Then pull your glove away so it don't burn your glove up and get your fingers all hot. This just helps you uh, create an arc better or start an arc. So use your wrist a lot. You got a lot of movement in your wrist. You could just rotate your wrist and that actually you gain like five or six inches. It helps a lot. All right, so I can't see anymore. I'm gonna pull out and stop. All right, guys, we got our fill passes done. We got four layers in, so we're ready for a cap. That's the fifth layer. So I kind of waited around, cooled the pipe, let the pipe cool, because I don't want to put my bottom bead on or start my cap first, because you may get undercut. Now we're gonna run our bottom bead. All right, it's gonna be eighth inch. So we're going ahead and get started. We're gonna do three passes. We're gonna start on the bottom, running about 100 amps. We're gonna make sure our pole's going over the edge of that foot, the edge of that uh, bottom bevel. All right. If we don't have it, we're gonna be underfilled, we're gonna call it, not undercut. But you may get a little bit undercut. All right, guys, not my best work. I need a little practice. I'm not in the groove anymore, so I don't have no undercut, underfill. I'm not higher than eighth inch on the reinforcement on the cap, no undercut or underfill. So that's still passed for the QC. So we, got, we did five layers, a root, hot pass, two fills, then a cap. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. Uh, I don't know, that's it. Thanks for watching well.com, my man cub. Make sure you guys learn something new every day. Learning is key. Thank you. All right, guys, you see this route? That's money, baby. I'm making that money. Um, man, I can't even think right now. <laughs>